welcome back to our channel and if you have not done so already please like comment and subscribe make sure you turn on the notification bell so you know when our videos go live and today's video is going to tell you a little bit about me so we just had our big cuties conquer in the stage weekend and this is the introduction to my presentation that i had for the weekend so if you don't know who i am how i came about in the sport why you should be listening to me this is your video check it out for almost 13 years now and I still go to every single one of those that I can go to, okay? I don't know enough. When, when you think you know you know, know enough, you don't know enough, right? Always have a student mentality. Always be going and learning more. The trends in the sport 100% change from year to year, okay? You'll see the evolution as they go along. And that's kind of where I wanted to start with this before we get into some of these buzzwords that we're gonna describe today, okay? I wanna talk a little bit about where I started and where we are today. <laughs> so I started competing in 2009 so I've been around for a minute okay that was the first year the bikini was around um, I competed in figure when I first started back when I started bikini looked like a regular bar Hooters contest like that's what bikini looked like and I was like I ain't doing that shit <laughs> I was like, no it was there was there was some very questionable posing um, I was like, no, this is not me. I'm figure. So I did figure, did well. Um, every show that I went into, I did well. But back then, you have to understand, this sport has expanded a lot. So back then, it was like there was like two shows in every state, and either you did them or you didn't compete. And there was no other options kind of thing. So I did that. Um, but I also realized that just because I was doing well at the local level didn't mean I was going to do well when I went to national level, right? So I took the, uh, the option of going to nationals because I was qualified. I knew I wasn't ready to go to nationals physique wise. I knew I wasn't ready, but I was like, I got to do this to figure out where, if I fit, you know? So I went to my first national show and I got crushed. Yeah, it was great, but I didn't take, didn't get last call out. That was my, that was my goal. I was like, as long as I don't get last call out, I'm good. So I didn't get last call out. So I was happy, but I knew I had a lot of work to do. So I went back to the drawing board and I was like, okay, you know, what they told me basically at that time was you're just not big enough for figure at the national level. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to give bikini a shot now. So I switched to bikini and I, again, did well at the local level. Always was top two in my class, no matter when I competed. I was always in that top, right? Went to nationals, got crushed. <laughs> Every time, got crushed. <laughs> got some last call outs. I'm not even gonna lie, I got some last call outs. And every time that I went to the national level, they told me one of two things. They told me either if I was in bikini, I was too big. If I was in figure, I was too small. So I was a tweener. I was one of those girls and they told me, they're like, listen, your body structure, the way that you're put together, you're never gonna do well at the national level in bikini at that point, at that point in time. That's not the case today. That was back then, that was a decade ago, okay? And so I was like, all right, so you, you gotta make this decision. They're like, either you're gonna stay on the local level in bikini or you're gonna take some time off, you're gonna grow and you're gonna go to figure. So that's what I did. So took a year off, came back, did figure show. Again, you know, placed top three, placed first in the local level but I knew I still wasn't ready to go to nationals. At this point, I'd been there, done that. I knew I wasn't ready. So I stopped, got off stage again, built again, came back, did a local show, had my worst placing ever, which for me, that was fourth. So that was my worst placing I'd ever taken. And it was two weeks before I'd planned to go back to national level. And I was like, fuck. If I can't even win my class at a local level show, what the hell am I gonna do when I go to nationals, right? So I went and got my feedback from the judges. I did this particular show for a reason. I did that show because it was the same judges I knew I was gonna be standing up against when I went to the national level. So I went and got my feedback and they said, listen, you just looked like you were two weeks out. You looked soft. You know, you just need to fill out a little bit more, get a little bit harder, you'll be good to go. I said, okay, all right, well, I can deal with that. So I went into my, my next national level show with zero expectations. You know, I was like, listen, if I can't even win my class at a local level, what am I gonna do? I went to Team U, and it's NPC Universe now. It was Team U at the time. Biggest national show of the year. I was like, I'm not doing shit. Got up on stage, got called out first, got stuck in the center, and never moved. And the next day, I won my pro card. I was like, well, damn. 
My point in saying all of that is that you have to take your judging feedback and understand it, okay? When I was at the local level, I thought I was hot shit, right? Because I always placed well at the local level. If you're put together decent and you come in looking in shape, you're gonna place well. That is not the same thing when you go to the national level, okay? When you go to the national level, it changes real quick, right? You're gonna see these girls up on stage look phenomenal, amazing, and place last, okay? So we're gonna go through today some of the things that you might hear as far as feedback is concerned from judges so that we can kind of describe it a little bit better and you can understand it a little bit better, okay? Now also, just so you guys know, I was a judge at one time too. I'm not anymore. I give a huge amount of respect to judges because I can't sit at a table all day long. I can't do it. I would get in trouble for being on my phone. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, maybe I'm ADD or something. I don't know, but I can't do this. It is a hard job. It is a very hard job to do. I'm very glad I did it because I wanted the experience. I wanted to be able to get the eye. I wanted to be able to know what I was looking at. It really helped me as a coach, helped me as a competitor, helped me with all those kinds of things. So I'm really glad that I did it, but I'm much better off working with all of you. <laughs> much better off working with all of you. So whenever you're at a show, please give, the, give these judges respect because the other part of it is they don't get paid a lot to do what they do. They do it because they love it. Okay, they actually genuinely love doing what they do as a judge. So when they're telling you feedback, they are telling you things that they want you to do so that you get better. Okay, so always remember that. They don't hate you. They don't think you're this, you're that, whatever. They don't think you're terrible. They're telling you the things that they're telling you so that you can come back the next time and show them that you can get better. Okay, so with that, we're going to talk about the love language of the judges and what do they really mean. So. And that is it for right now, but keep watching because we may have some very special things coming up, including our athlete search. It's our eighth annual athlete search and it starts on Tuesday. So make sure you're paying attention. And if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, turn on those notifications and like comment and also go to our Instagram too, because we got some special stuff coming up. See you back here next time.